President Trump is vetting candidates for the Supreme Court. He'll make his pick one week from today. We'll look at whether Democrats can do anything to block that pick and if there are any Republicans who might defect. Then more frustration over immigration. Protests nationwide, hundreds of kids still separated from their families, and it seems ready to become a major election issue, or does it? Also, if Democrats fight fire with fire, will they get burned? How should Dems channel their outrage? Good evening and welcome to RFL. I'm Andrew Whitman in tonight for Richard French. One week from today, President Trump says he'll announce his pick for the Supreme Court to replace the retiring Justice Anthony Kennedy. Here's the president in the Oval Office today. During the morning, I interviewed and met with four potential justices of our great Supreme Court. Uh, they are outstanding people. They are really incredible people uh, in so many different ways, academically and every other way. And I had a very, very interesting morning. Incredible people. As we know, President Trump has his eye on several conservative justices, and he wants a judge who is pro-life, and that puts Roe versus Wade in jeopardy. We'll look at abortion in a moment, but first the politics. Senator Chuck Schumer, the minority leader, with something of a change of tactics when it comes to the court opening. Last week it was no vote until after the midterms. Now he's calling for a moderate to be put on the bench. Here's part of Schumer's op-ed in today's New York Times. Quote, for Americans who value our rights and the progress our country has made over the last decade, it is no longer enough to wait until November to safeguard the rights and opportunities we enjoy today. The Republican majority in the Senate is razor thin. One or two votes in the Senate will make the difference between the confirmation and rejection of an ideological nominee. If the Senate rejects an extreme candidate, it will present President Trump the opportunity to instead select a moderate consensus nominee. If every Democrat votes against Trump's pick and every Republican supports the nominee, he or she will become the next Supreme Court justice. But if even one Republican votes no, it is likely a whole new ball game. That turns the focus to these four Republican senators. They're widely considered the ones who could possibly flip, and all it takes, again, is one. Let's introduce our panel. Amy Siskind is here. She is the president of The New Agenda and host of the Weekly List podcast and also the author of The List, available now. Also joining us, Jeannie Zeno. She is a professor of political science at Iona College and also a senior advisor at the consulting firm Applied Techonomics. Ladies, thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Thank you. Anything that Republicans can do to block this nominee? Republican, oh, Democrats? Oh, sorry, Democrats. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. Well, I, this is worth fighting for because every social issue that basically has come up in the last half century is under battle here. Already the Trump regime has tried to take down parts of the Civil Rights Act protections for sexual orientation. So I think not only do we want to wait to midterms, but we want to know if the Mueller investigation is complete, if there was interference with our election and whether Trump was involved in that interference. So until those two things are done, I don't think he's in a position to be that we should be giving him any sort of say. I think everyone should be mobilized to try to block the Senate from voting. And, and that's the argument for trying to stop or delay the vote. But Jeannie, is there any mechanism that you can see where Democrats actually have the leverage to do it? Very, very little. I mean, it, this, is, um, this is a numbers battle and Republicans have the numbers. Their only hope, Democrats, is to pull over one or two of those Republicans. And I will tell you, we all saw Susan Collins, for instance, out on the talk show circuit this weekend. And Susan Collins is somebody who has said she wants to, t if you listen carefully to what she said, she wants to hear what they have to say about abortion. None of these nominees, whoever they are, are gonna answer a question about abortion. Susan Collins will side with the president as she has in most of these cases. So highly unlikely Democrats can do anything at this point. They're gonna push the argument to appoint a moderate. They're gonna push the argument they shouldn't have the, the vote until after the midterm. And those things likely fall by the wayside, except he may get somebody in, you know, a Gorsuch or Roberts. Um, probably not, because they are being vetted by the Federalist Society. But that's, a, the, I think, the best possibility is what Chuck Schumer wrote in the op-ed today. And, and let's explore abortion as an issue when it comes to the Supreme Court pick in greater depth. It is clearly the biggest issue uh, among a lot of people when it comes to this election. A new poll from Kaiser shows that 67% of Americans do not want Roe versus Wade overturned, and we've seen similar numbers in other polls. Only 29% say they want it gone. Now, abortion, as Jeannie mentioned, is a big issue for Maine Senator Susan Collins. She's a Republican, she's pro-choice, and she could be the swing vote. 
a candidate for this important position who would overturn Roe v. Wade would not be acceptable to me because that would indicate an activist agenda. She says she's pro-choice, as does Lisa Murkowski of Alaska, yes. but we've seen this before where they, on key issues, where they tease and, and say, well, I'm thinking about it, and they tend to vote Republican party line in, on, on everything except health care. Do you trust them? Well, there's a Quinnipiac poll out today that puts Democrats up now plus nine in the midterms, but importantly, plus 25 with women. So, you know, Republican Party, do this at your own peril. I mean, this will be a, a bloodbath in November in the House and Senate if they pick an extremist, and everybody on that Federalist list was picked because they are an extremist. Some of them even conjure the handmaid's tail, literally, in you know, their religious beliefs. So, I, you know, again, I'm going to go back to these are not normal times, and we have a sitting president who is going to make a second pick who is under investigation for possible collusion with Russia. Supposedly, Mueller could come out with the results, including to, uh, according to Bloomberg, in the fall before the election. Mm -hmm. So I think that we have to be on the phones. We have to be doing everything we can with people in the states, where Murkowski, in Alaska, in Tennessee, in Maine, to push those senators to at least push off through the midterm. That was their rationale when we didn't have Merrick Garland. I think the Democrats need to stop bringing knives to a gunfight. They need to come out and fight hard. This is too important. This will change beyond Roe v. Wade. We're, we're going to lose gay marriage. We're going to lose the Civil Rights Act. We're going to lose affirmative action, et cetera, et cetera. Voter suppression will rise. This is too important not to fight with every ounce we can. I get that. I do. And, and there could be significant electoral consequences for particularly those two female Republican senators if this new appointee is put on the court. But Jeannie, is the threat of that, because neither, neither Murkowski nor Collins is on the ballot this fall, is, is the threat of a pushback on abortion enough in your mind to convince them maybe not to go so quickly towards a confirming a presidential appointee? I don't think either one of them, Murkowski or Collins, is going to go quickly, but I do think Collins in particular, given her track record in the end, will support the president's pick, provided it is not somebody, you know, so objectionable to moderate Republicans. And we have to be honest. You know, the Trump presidency hasn't had many fine moments. Their finest moment was the appointment of mm -hmm. Gorsuch. It went smoothly. It went like clockwork. It's something they know how to do. They did it well. Now, the difference is they're doing it more internally this time. But if you look at that as an example, if they follow that playbook, it's not something that's going to move Senator Collins. And there's something else to keep in mind. Ten years ago, Ten Republicans in the Senate were pro-choice. We are down to two. Mm -hmm. This is a very different world. And I would just say on the issue of women, we need to be very careful of that. White women supported Donald Trump in vastly greater numbers than anybody expected. And that is something that they know and keep in mind. And listen to the rhetoric coming out of Republicans today. I've been talking to several of them. They are all saying, we are not trying to overturn Roe. They will keep saying that over and over, whether they're trying to or not, because they are going to be very careful about the, the rhetoric on this. So I'm not sure that this is going to have the impact that, that in, in Republican circles, where his support is now 90%. Well, and that, that brings us like to one of the percent of, of a shrinking 22% or 25% of the population. And when Hillary it's ran... It's 90% of his party. It's 90% of his party. But that doesn't get you or in, Republicans. In gerrymandered Republican di districts, it absolutely does for the House. And the Senate is probably not going to go Democratic because it, the numbers are very, the very bad. The show the Senate could actually the go map Democrat. Is, well, no, the map is very bad for Democrats this year. It always okay. has been. Republicans are defending the seats. But I want to bring because, back... No, the map is the map. It's been the same... I've seen the map. It's shifted. Okay, but no, 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 the, no, the no, Democrats. No, 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 no. Okay, okay, no, no. I'm well, sorry. It's uh, the Senate battleground states. We we can deal with another time. I just want to get back to the point that you were touching on, which is the sort of facade that's coming out in this abortion as a Supreme Court issue, yeah. where it's the president says, "I'm not going to ask them about abortion." Uh, Susan Collins says, "I, you know." We'll hear if they talk about abortion. But there's no need to talk about abortion because these guys are all pre-approved, guys and women, are all pre-approved to be, uh, you know, op opposed to Roe versus Wade. Yes. It, does that, I mean, Republicans, as Jeannie said, are going to try to use that as cover. Hey, we're not talking about abortion in this, but it's really, a, it's going to be there the whole time. 
It's, yes, the elephant in the room. And women voters have shifted dramatically. I'm aware that white women voted for him 53 to 43, but the data doesn't support that anymore. There's been a huge shift in women voters. And, you know, again, at your own peril. I think for Democrats and independents, and a lot of the people who are neither party, which is 43%, this is an engaging issue. And, um, you know, I think for Democrats and young women and millennials, and young people, it's time to fight, and they're going to fight. Um, if that doesn't turn out, again, I think it's, you know, the electoral map is shifting, including the Senate races. I think it's going to be, you know, the Republicans will pay dearly in 2018, but I'm hoping that we don't get to that. I'm hoping that we can come up with some tactics, and if Schumer can come up with tactics, he should step down as leader of our party. But the question is, what tactics possibly are there? I, I there don't is, know the, the Democrats. The Democrats gave up the ability to do this by any other way except for a majority you vote. Gotta, and the minute they did that in 2013, you got to push off the vote. The, you and could, I'm, you, I'm not a parliamentarian the, but, in but the pushing Senate, out the but vote, whatever, but well, whatever but, like techniques but they can, can do. Finish? But pushing out the vote is not enough to stop the debate that's going to happen in the confirmation and the vote. That's my point. I'm not saying I want you whoever he, he nominates. Whatever they're, you know, you play dirty, which the D Republicans consistently do and but the Democrats they only need never do. They only need the 51 and they have them. And so unless you pull over Republicans, you don't and even that's get to where the those vote. women. You play dirty, the same way they've always but played dirty. How do you not get to a vote? Uh, the parliamentary rules. No, I, I, I understand, and I know you don't. You're not a parliamentarian. Yeah. But no, but, as but much but as I I, as much as I've vote, studied, how do you, I, don't, I don't. There's no way. I don't know of any way. unless you have the numbers, and that's the problem for Democrats. And so, yeah, I absolutely agree. You need to fight it out of the ballot box. Unfortunately, given the timing of this thing, it's a really tough uphill battle. So we need to be honest about the fact that it is going to be tough for Democrats out there to make this, and that's why you see Chuck, Chuck Schumer all over the map on this. Do you remember during the shutdown debates during under Obama under President? President Obama, there was the group of six or the group of eight. There were uh, a bipartisan mm -hmm. group toward, more towards the middle of uh, three or four senators from each party who formed their own little caucus and said, mm -hmm. we're going to make sure that this thing gets hammered out, some successfully, some not successfully. There might be an opportunity here for the Joe Manchins and Heidi Heitkamps and uh, you know other Republic or other Democrats who are in Trump states, along with those Republicans who might be disaffected, Murkowski, Collins, Flake, Corker. There might be, a, that's the only opportunity that I can think of. Corker has stood up to him. Right, but I don't know if that's, this feels in line with what Corker and Flake, what their worldview would actually be. I'm yes. not sure they would do that just to oppose the president. It's, you know, they've voted know. for judges. I, I got to tell you, I'm not optimistic about Democrats' chances to block this, and I don't think it's Schumer's fault. I mean, and I, I think to your point, I mean, we've seen that over and over again, and when that has happened, it has not been successful of late. They have not been able to surmount, and don't forget, we're talking about a nominee to the Supreme Court. If you look at the history on that, they will hold the party line, unfortunately for Democrats and fortunately for Republicans. So it is really difficult when you did lose the Senate this narrowly. The last time it happened was Obamacare, and three Republicans went on the other side. So we've had one example with the Supreme Court, but we've also had an example where Republicans didn't stay with Trump. So I think it's unknown and it's worth the battle. Final, final point on this. If you do successfully push this vote until after the election, then all of a sudden it's a big election generating event for both sides. Yes. Where Democrats had, had a lot of the energy on, on immigration, which we'll get to in a moment. Republicans, the Republican voters will come out in droves if there's a Supreme Court pick on the line. It was one of the top issues in 2016. Nobody who was a Democrat was ever thinking this was under siege. This is a whole new, I mean, and the people that didn't bother to vote because they couldn't, like, you know, the 40, whatever it was, 48% of our country that didn't get to the polls in 2016, you watch them get to the polls. And that might have been the biggest shortcoming for Democrats in 2016, not making the Supreme Court vacancy enough of an issue or fighting hard enough for Merrick Garland yes. when they had the chance. We'll take a break. Up next, another big issue this fall, immigration. But which party has the edge? Democrats say it's them. Republicans say it's a winner for their party. We're going to debate and discuss right after this.